So I'm gonna quickly go over the chords that happen in this song and some of the different sections, but the main thing I'm gonna focus on in this lesson is the finger picking. There's plenty of lessons out there that kind of show you kind of how to strum through the song, but I'm really gonna focus on how he plays it um, live. I mainly based this version on a performance he recently did on Letterman. Um, so I'll include that in the links below, but use the lesson navigator to find the parts of the lesson you need the most. They'll really help you out. All right, so intro to the song starts out with a walk down from C. You're doing C, you kind of like slide this finger back down, and then you kind of go to A minor. So if you should be familiar with, the ring finger goes down to the third fret of the E string for a C with a G in the bass, and then you're gonna switch to an F chord. He usually fully bars this F, it's a good thing to do. So that's the intro, and he'll do kind of this, this riff where he kind of switches out of that and he hammers on through, kind of hammers through the third fret of the D string, second fret of the G string, and the first fret of the B string. And then he kind of, usually I take these three fingers, the pointer, middle, and pinky, and use them to kind of bend on the B string. And I keep the ring finger planted where it is to be kind of a bass note, because it kind of goes. Kind of pluck them together. Takes a little work to get the balance of that down, so take some time, really try to get that bend down, and then try to work it into this, where you go. to the C. So he'll end a lot of these riffs with that little lick there, which is a great lick. Okay, so now, now that you're into the the verses, he kind of does the same thing. Right there he does. Let us be lovers, we'll marry our fortunes together. Another variation he very commonly does at the end is he'll kind of take his ring finger and lean it over and kind of play a B flat real temporarily. You don't usually, you don't want to hear usually this G here. You don't want to go you don't want to hear that note, so usually I kind of like, my pinky's here, I usually kind of get it out of the way and let my ring finger kind of lay down. And usually for me, the angle of this finger kind of comes up right around the E string and mutes it really nicely. So that's usually the, the easy, at least for me, that's the easiest way to get it. Mess around with your fingers, there's some other ways to do it. You can lean the pinky down, you know, you can just, you can just go, you can grab it like that if you need to, but for me, the easiest way is just to go. Kind of let my pinky get out of the way or roll the ring finger over works great okay so he does a similar thing again except he's going to stop on a minor he goes c walks down the bass in the second fret and it kind of hangs onto the a minor just a little hammer there hammers onto the third fret of the b string and he goes e minor a7 minor and a7 again then then we d c to g and he does this walk he does if you've never seen this walk before paul simon uses this all the time he's playing open b and the third fret of the low e string the a of the first and then the first fret of the b string the middle finger plays the second fret of the a string and the pinky plays the third fret of the B string. And then you wind back up on a C chord. It's a very common walk. He does this walk in both directions in a lot of songs, but in this song he's going. Yeah, really make sure you do that with the same fingers I'm doing it with, because it's very hard to do it otherwise. But in that fingering, after you kind of get used to the coordination of the switches, you can usually do it pretty quick without difficulty. All right, so at that point, um, he goes back and basically does the first verse again. Pretty much the same thing he did chord-wise. Kathy, I said as we boarded a Greyhound in Pittsburgh. Michigan seems like a dream to me now. So now, instead of holding on to that so long, he goes to a G and he just starts strumming here. It took me four days to hitchhike from Saginaw. And he goes, D. G to D for a C major seven. Now he's going into bridge changes. Here, um, he does something different live than on the record, but I'll, I'll show you what the live versions are. He goes F major seven. Laughing on the bus, playing games with the C major seven. 
kind of holds these two bars a piece. F major 7 again. He said the man in the gabardine suit was a C major 7. So it's just these two chords. And then he's kind of coming out of it with the F major 7. I said be careful, his bow tie is really a... When you get back to the C chord, you start doing something very similar to the intro walk down. A camera. So you're kind of walking down like you've been. When you get to here, you do an F sharp half diminished seven chord. So usually I use my thumb to reach around for this. You can do it sort of like this if you like. I think the way Paul Simon does it and the way that works best here is use your thumb on the second fret of the E string, middle finger on the second fret of the D string, ring finger second fret of the G string, pointer finger first fret of the B string. Those are your notes. A little bit of a jazzy chord there. And then he just slides the thumb down for one more chord on that part. So he's kind of, I said, be careful, his bow tie is really a camera to the G, half diminished chord, and then F major seven. And then at that point, he literally goes right back to the beginning and does the exact same form through the third verse and through the last chorus. He, he tags a little coda on the end where he goes an extra time through the D chord at the end. the same walk up and then the same C walk down he's been using up to this point where he goes down to the F and he goes so those are all the chords at least for the song and I definitely showed you a lot of the left hand stuff there too, at least the, like the um the hammers and what have you so all right now we're ready to get into the beef of it which is really how he does the picking um I should start this out by saying it's not very strict. He varies this a lot in different live performances. But rather than start trying to come up with rules for like what you can do and what you can't do, I'm just going to show you some of what he does do and just say, this works really nicely. If you don't hit all the right notes, it's probably still going to sound pretty good, but this is a good place to start. Okay. So we're going to start with thumb, pointer, middle, and they're going to be on the A string, the G string, and the B string. And you're just going to go walk the thumb down, same strings. When you get to the A chord, I'm gonna kind of shuffle this a bit. I'm gonna use the pointer finger on the D string and the ring finger on the B string, kind of opens the chord up a bit. So we're skipping the G string now. And also, if you, if you, if you wanna see this stuff in tab, make sure you use the tab link below. That will really help with this particular part. So we've got this open A minor chord. Now we're gonna do a funny little riff here. We're gonna, when we get to this G chord, we're gonna leave the pointer finger where it was, second fret of the D string, and kind of pinch the G, the G note down here on the E string and the open B and go and pluck the D and the G string. So the riff is A minor. And the idea is that it leads to that F chord just like that. So take a little time, get that riff down. That's one of the cool little things that you, if, if you're looking for Paul Simon likes, that's a really good one. Okay, so. And there's where it changes. And he's just gonna cook arpeggio kind of up and down. Thumb, pointer on the D, middle on the G. And he kind of ends it with a real quick thumb stroke on the B, but he kind of goes up. And thumb stroke to end it before he goes. And usually what I'll do is I'll just do thumb, pointer, middle, and then kind of pinch with that. All right, so I'd go over all that again, make sure you kind of nailed it down up to that point into the second line, second line of the intro. He starts it by just kind of brushing the chord and then snapping his hand right back to keep going with this arpeggio. So he goes brush, D string, G string. When he does the G chord, he kind of switches the voicing a hair. Same fingering he uses in the walk up middle, yeah, middle finger, second fret of the A string, pinky third fret of the D, uh, yeah, the B string focus here, John. And he mixes up the arpeggio here. He does A string, B string, D string. So I always call this like a little twist. I call this the twist arpeggio because you see this figure a lot, but you know, he brushes, fills it in, and he does the twist over the G. And he goes back to this kind of same, does the same lick over the A minor and the G that he did before. And then when he gets to the F chord, he starts the ascending arpeggio again, but then kind of starts strong. 
And then he does the strumming pattern that he does a lot and ends it with a little three note up, yeah, ascending, picking arpeggio. So let me just show you the strumming he does here. He does this riff a lot. He's gonna go down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Wait, well, I guess those are two upstrokes. It's. So the key is he's really, really want to emphasize the backbeats. The backbeats kind of make it, kind of make it flow a bit. So you want to go down, down, down. When I say backbeats, what I really mean here is downbeats. It's really, the, it's really the, the right on the 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 heavy beats of the six eight. That's when he tends to emphasize it in this song. So. So let's go back just for this line rephrase what we did for that second line of the intro and then it will get into the verse. So it starts with a brush of the secret, right? One, two, three. Ascending, does the twist over the G, and the same A minor riff over the G he did before. It starts the ascending arpeggio, but then goes into the strumming. It's a little B riff thing, and ends with a real quick picking thing, and then he's into the verse. So, Sum up what you've done, make sure you kind of got it in your head before you go on, and let's keep rolling. So when he gets to the verses, he tends to simplify things a little bit, because he's singing now, so he doesn't want to have to think quite as hard. So he's pretty much going to keep the pointer and the middle finger planted on the G and the B strings. You're going to see same walk down, then a walk. When he gets to the A minor, he's going to get a full A minor shape, so it's not an open G anymore, but he's going to let it be these two fingers are going to open up the G and the B string over the F chord, or F, I mean over the G chord, and then the F chord is the same strumming thing, except now he finishes it, and he just finishes it with three down strokes, one, two, three, and he kind of trails it off, just one, two, three, as the last three strumming strokes there. So we play just that first line of the verse real quick, play it along with me again, one, two, three, let us be lovers. So make sure you got that down. We go on to the next line. It starts pretty much the same way. This one's very simple. I've got some real estate. He's gonna hang on to this A minor. He's gonna play it three times. Just same thing. Then brush. Uses the pinky to play the third fret of the B string. Actually goes brush, pinky. No, I kind of just pluck it with my ring finger there since it's kind of already there at that point. Um, so I'll just play that one more time. Play it along with me if you can. One, two, three. I've got some real estate here in the bag. And then the brush. And then to go on, he's going to brush the E minor chord and fill it in with those same two ascending notes, the D and the G string, just like he did earlier when he kind of started the second part of the intro with the C chord. He's going to brush D and G. And then hit the low E and fill in those same two notes in an ascending little thing. So he's basically going like twice, but first time he's kind of adding a little brush there. So he goes brush, two, three, brush, two, three. When he gets to the A chord, he does kind of like an up and down arpeggio. But I'm using the middle finger and the ring finger here. He kind of plucks the top notes of that arpeggio, just kind of accent it. So it's not quite the same as it just adds a little bit of spice to it. Now there I use my pinky and my ring finger there. If, if you are not a fan of using your pinky, I would do thumb on the lowest two notes. I'd do thumb, thumb, pointer, and then pluck with those two. Yeah. Or you can go thumb, pointer, middle, and kind of like, you can also kind of brush stroke with the ring finger there if you want. Try a few, see which one you like the best. But the key is up, down. And then he's gonna do a very similar thing. He's gonna start, go back to the E minor. He's gonna hit this top B and hold it for an extra beat, and then hit the G again. So he goes, and one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how that bar goes. I'll play it one more time, see if you can get the count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll loop it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, four, five, six. So it's just a very slight break of like the constant, you know, 
just stream of notes. So it's a little way to break the rhythm. It's a good riff to have in your hand. And he's essentially going to repeat the same A chord exactly. It's just N, C, swag, no pies. So same up and down that he just did before. So let's see if we can play that little kind of you know, middle four, as it were. Um, just starting on that E minor. So we've just come out of the A minor. We go brush. We brush the E minor. Add two notes. Come with that same arpeggio. I'm going up the A with a little pluck at the top. Same little E minor, but it hangs on at the top. And then the A. So go over that a few times if you need to, to kind of nail it down. Now, let's on to the next part. And this is, and we walked off to look for America. So, starts on a D chord. You, you can, I would finger the whole D chord, although you're only going to play three notes. You're going to go the open D, G string, and the B string. So those three. You're going to go to a C, and you're going to play that little twist figure I showed you before. So you're playing the A string, the B string, and the D string. So just that bar is, it does the D. One, two, three, then the twist. And then just the walk up we did before. And then it basically does the intro again. Except it keeps the strumming all the way through. There you have it. So see if you can get through that middle eight and then through that transition there. Tie it all together. I mean, this is actually a really good point to go back to the beginning of the song and see if you can get pretty much everything we've done so far. Because we've done almost all the fancy finger picking stuff that's going to go on in this. It's a couple of riffs to come, but the most of what's coming is he's going to start strumming as he goes into the chorus. So see how much you can sum up to this point. Let's get started on verse two if you're ready. So here we go. Same kind of picking he's done before. He's got, again, pointer finger on the D string, middle finger on the B string. Thumb in the A string, C, walks it down, turns into A minor, the strings go open for the G chord, and then the F, he's just going to pluck the D and the G string instead, he's going to kind of shift it down a bit, and then the strumming riff, and then the three strums trails off. Now he's going to do the same walk down, but now he's going to like hit a bass note and strum, so he's going to bass, and down, down, up, down, up, bass, down, down, up, bass, and by this time, after you've kind of done that A minor chord twice, you really want to just kind of start hitting all the notes because it kind of swells the, the volume. So it starts out as a bass note. Michigan seems like a dream to me now. And now I'm just going to strum everything. Same pattern. G. Took me four days to hitchhike from Saginaw. D. G. D. C major 7. So it's just a C, I've just taken this finger away. But it's that exact same pattern. It's just down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's just that same strumming pattern through the whole thing. Nothing fancy. Um, if you really give the, the, the beginning beats of those patterns, the heaviness, that's really what's going to work. So let's take it from the beginning of verse 2 and see if we can play all the way up to the bridge there. I think we can do it. Follow through with me if you can. So starting on the C chord. One, two, three. Three. Kathy, I said, as we boarded a Greyhound in Pittsburgh. Strumming. Now it's going to start bass, but strumming. Michigan. Bass. strumming the same pattern through the bridge. So if you feel like you got that, bridge, just dive right into it. So F major 7, you can reach around for the low F if you want to. I usually don't. It's usually just harder, and it gives it a little more lightness to keep just the light string. So I usually drop the low E string. But I'll play kind of this fingering of F. I got the ring finger, third fret of the A string, pinky, third fret of the D string, middle finger, second fret of the G string, and pointer finger, first fret of the B string. And leave the E string open and just strum the middle strings. It's a little lighter, changes the feel a bit. So he just goes down. Laughing on the bus, playing games. So you just have the faces. And it's 
it's just these two chords. It should switch fairly easily. Watch how my hands just are ready. She said the man in the gabardine suit was a spy. So you should have the hands just set up to kind of switch fairly easily. That's four patterns on each. Comes out. I said be careful. His bow tie is really a camera. So right when you would go to the C major 7, that third time through the cycle, you go back to this kind of picking walk down. Very familiar, nothing fancy in it yet. Now one fun thing he actually did here is, after this A minor chord, he'll do the G and the bass, but he kind of keeps the A minor fingers for him. You can either reach around the pinky here to grab that and keep the A minor shape, or I'll use the pointer in the middle here to do sort of like a half A minor and the G down here. But it's a slight variation on the chord that just makes a little bit of a flavor change. So, C walks down to the A minor, A minor with G and the bass. Now it's our F half diminished, and it just goes up and down. So it goes thumb, pointer in the D, and on those inner strings, the same pattern, just move the thumb down. And so if you can get everything up to that point, in fact, let's, let's play just that picking ending one more time and then try to go sum up what you've got so far, because at that point, you've pretty much got the song. It's really just the ending, which is all the same stuff. So let's do just this picking ending. It's just going to start on the C walk down. One, two, three. C, walk down. A minor. It's going to be A minor, G in the bass. The half diminished chord. Just walk the thumb down. And then you can just take it to the exact same thing at the beginning of the first verse. and. You know, you know, that's as many kind of picking variations as you need to have the song kind of sound very varied, but the form is exactly the same through the second chorus. You just use the different words. And then after you've gone, you know, I've gone to look for America. Rather than going to the bridge, you repeat it sort of. So on that kind of third pattern of the C there, it does one, two, three, and then the walk up. C with the walk down. A minor. Now one of the variation he does here over this G chord, it's kind of cute. He does sort of, it's kind of like neither like a G nor an A minor with a G in the bass or anything. He just, he does the G down here. He has plays the A on the G string, but then leaves the open B. So it's kind of like a G add nine chord. It's a very slight variation on the G, but it just it keeps the it keeps the feeling of the song evolving. So again, from this walk down C, goes down to the B, A minor, the G, and the add nine. Now on this last F arpeggio, hit the low F, and just start going up from the D string to the G to the B to the F. When you hit this high um, F, skip back down to the G string, and then you can just throw this in. So let me just show you that last last two bars one more time. The low F, D, G, D, F, G. And actually, a lot of times he leaves that hanging there. He doesn't even resolve it to there until he hits this chord. So he just kind of, yeah, excuse me, yeah. just like so. All right, so. We've thumbed through the whole thing like this. Let's see if we can go through the whole song a little bit slow. So I'll, I'm just going to play everything slowly through. Play along if you can, if you find it helpful. All right, let's roll. i 
Toss me a cigarette I think there's one in Thanks for playing along with us, folks. Hope to keep doing more Simon and Garfunkel song as part of both, uh, as part of both the Travis picking and the finger picking, yeah, finger picking series. Woo! Yeah, I can't learn how to speak again. I've been playing so much guitar. Okay, so looking forward to that coming up. Talk to you folks soon. Bye bye.